Today, we're talking the four reasons why I personally choose Capture One over Adobe Lightroom Classic for my photo editing. Let's count them down. Hello and welcome to episode number 77 of Photo Kitchen. I am your humble host, MD Welch, and today we're talking the four reasons why I choose Capture One over Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, it's important to point out that I, first of all, teach both of these programs. And if you're interested in my teaching, by the way, check out the link in the description below. So I do teach both of these programs because both of these programs do apply to different shooters in different ways. I also have a relationship with people who do work with Capture One. However, I don't get any money from Capture One. They don't have any influence in any of the work that I do, but I do want you to know that there is a kind of proxy relationship there going on. With that being said, I'm gonna show you the four reasons why I think Capture One is better than Lightroom Classic for the type of work that I do and maybe the type of work that you do. This doesn't mean that there aren't more features that Capture One does and it doesn't mean that necessarily Lightroom Classic is a bad program, but these are four big reasons why I think you might want to switch from Adobe Lightroom Classic over to Capture One. Wow. So let's jump right into the first reason why I prefer Capture One over Adobe Lightroom Classic. And that is that Capture One allows you to do something called sessions and not just a catalog. So in Capture One, if you come up to file and select new, you have a choice of either doing a new catalog, which Lightroom Classic also does, or a new session. Now, Capture One originated as a tethering program specifically for the phase one camera system. So they were already curtailed to commercial photographers that were shooting jobs. And that's probably a better word than session. And if anybody from phase one or Capture One is listening to me, Take note of that. So a new session kind of consolidates all of the information into one location. Now, Adobe Lightroom Classic solely depends on a catalog. So if I come over into the library module, you could see all of the hard drives here that I have connected or have connected to the catalog and all of these different folders. And that's great because I could quickly search an entire catalog to find a series of photos that I need from whenever I've been shooting, whatever I brought into the catalog. But with Capture One, the nice thing is, is you can consolidate all of that data into one place because if you are monetizing your work, if you're shooting for a profession, if you're shooting for paying the bills, you don't want client A seeing client B's work. In fact, a lot of photographers make new catalogs in Adobe Lightroom Classic for this specific reason. Now in Capture One, they do that for you automatically. If you come up to file and you do a new session, what's going to happen is they're going to ask you where you want to save this. And they're gonna create one folder and inside of that, they're going to have the database that tracks all of the stuff for your session. They're gonna put all of the information that you either tether shoot or import inside of the capture folder. And then they're also going to give you the option to do something called selects. And then you have a folder for all your outputted files. And then lastly, a folder for all your trash. Now, whatever you call um, this particular project, so let's say CP1 versus LRC, for Capture One versus Lightroom Classic. The capture name, so if you're doing any sort of tethered shooting or you want to leverage this for custom naming later on, the capture name can match up or you could change the capture name so it's different from the actual name of the session. Now the benefit of this is, I will do a quick uh, opening the oven and pull out a turkey and show you the finished product of this, is that here's the database for a particular job and then I have all of my images inside this capture folder I also have any images that maybe I've outputted inside of the output folder so I can consolidate all those exports. I'm not saving to location A or location B, although Capture One does allow you to do that. And then I can also have all of my selects. And in this case, I saved my select folder name as Photoshop because that's where I put my Photoshop files. And then if I had any files inside of the trash, which I do, I can go ahead and delete those either outside of Capture One or inside the program. Now, the benefit of this is, is I'm gonna cancel this and come back into Capture One is that I could have all of my capture information, but if you're not a big metadata fan, you could simply have an image and let's say that you want to move this
this over to selects. There's a really quick way to do this. And now all of your information is in a separate folder and it's easy to kind of differentiate this for a client so they can just focus on the great stuff and they're not seeing all the stuff that you haven't deleted yet. And then again, you could also see all the information that you've outputted and of course, any information that you have trashed. This is just a really easy way to consolidate your data. If you're shooting in the field, now you have one folder to manage. You don't have a whole catalog to manage. You're not merging catalogs. It makes life a lot easier to work with. And again, if you're paying the bills as a photographer, this is probably a far better way to stay organized, to be able to archive your work and overall work with your files digitally on a computer. Up next is tethered shooting. Now tethered shooting is done both in Lightroom Classic and Capture One, but Capture One, let's just be honest, does it better. At the time of this recording, there's a huge problem inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic with tethered shooting with a Sony camera. I have my Sony camera currently co connected. If I go to tethered capture and say start tethered capture and I'll just do a quick test here and then click okay, it will sit here forever trying to detect the camera. And there are all sorts of workarounds and plugins for this, but this seems to be a problem with not only Sony cameras, but also Nikon cameras as well. And to be honest with you, Lightroom Classic has always been buggy as a tethered shooting program. So if you're thinking about doing any sort of tethered shooting, this might be a reason not to use Adobe Lightroom Classic and come over to Capture One. Capture One has a dedicated panel to this. As you can see, I've done this in real time. I've switched from one program over to another program the camera is on and Capture one doesn't care that Lightroom was trying to connect. I can automatically see all of my information. I have a Sony camera here. I can make adjustments to the f-stop or the uh, shutter speed or the ISO. I could also take a picture. But another nice thing that Capture One does that Lightroom Classic doesn't do is you could actually do a live view here. So if I click the live view button, I could actually see what is going on inside of my camera. Now, one thing I will say about live view is it is a little bit um, tricky or a little bit glitchy, but it does do an okay job. It doesn't seem to work for all cameras. For example, I can't digitally zoom in and check out this file, but if I was to come in and do a focus, I could check the focus on my camera. And even though that Capture One doesn't allow me to digitally zoom in, because I'm digitally zoomed in on my camera screen, that carries over into live view here. And also, if I wanted to see what the aperture or the depth of field would look like, as I'm zoomed in here, I can increase my f-stop and then reduce my shutter speed or increase my ISO to get an exposure that I want to. So maybe right about there. And now I could go ahead and digitally zoom in again and I could see what the depth of field now looks like as I focus on the part of the label in the foreground compared to the label in the background. I could see that depth of field. And all that you really need to make this happen, obviously you have a camera, you have a computer. If you got Capture One, now you just need a cable to connect the camera to the computer. This is for those of you who are thinking about shooting tethered, a huge reason to go over to Capture One. I haven't run into a lot of people that have problems with the program. I've done it successfully with Canon cameras, Nikon cameras, uh, obviously Sony cameras. I know Fuji works really well with this particular system. Really the only company that doesn't work would be Hasselblad because they have their own tethering software. So, and of course you could go ahead and hit the shutter button remotely, take pictures. So this is great for those of you who maybe have a camera mounted overhead, high or low, have this shift over in real time makes life a lot easier. You could see your adjustments. And this just isn't for studio photographers. Uh, you know, if you have a laptop, you could be doing this for landscapes. You could be doing this for still life work. Again, it's nice if you're remote mounting a camera, you can't maybe get to the aperture or ISO or shutter speed settings easily and you needed to adjust for depth of field. You could do white balance. All of these changes could be applied to subsequent shooting. So you could shoot maybe a little bit of overexposure and then knock this down in post. And of course, you're seeing your raw image, if you're shooting in raw, appear in in real time with the histogram so you could see exactly what is going on inside your image. You're not guessing on the back of a little tiny LCD screen. Tethered shooting is huge. And if it's something that you want to do, Capture One's probably your best solution for this. I hate to do anything as dramatic as count to three. Next up is another major thing that Lightroom Classic doesn't do well compared to Capture One. And that is the crop tool. In fact, Adobe as a company 
does not do the crop tool really well. And this is not only a reason why I use Capture One, but it's also a major complaint that I have about Adobe. If somebody from Adobe is listening to this, and thank you for listening to this, and by the way, this is a great time to point out to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and please leave a comment below, because I always like to hear feedback from all of my viewers. But if somebody from Adobe is watching this, please, please fix the crop tool. It is broken both in Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. So I have this rather rugged individual that I have done some post-production work in Photoshop, but the nice thing about both Lightroom Classic and Capture One is you could edit your Photoshop file Files in those programs in a non-destructive way so you could continue to work with them. I am a big proponent of cropping at the end of the creative process, not at the beginning of the creative process. I've done a video on this and I will link that in the description below. But back to why the crop tool is terrible in both Adobe programs here. If I use the crop tool inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic and I try to crop this image down, I will not have any sort of indication of what's going on. So for example, let's say the client, let's say this rugged individual wants a little bit of a tighter headshot or they want an eight by 10 here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to size this down a little bit and give them an eight by 10 or a four by five ratio crop. And I'll just go ahead and hit the done button. There is nothing here that tells me how big this image is now. Did I crop it too much? Do I have enough information? Maybe to make a 16 by 20, maybe they want to mount this over their fireplace or something like that, staring at you. I mean, I have really no idea. Now there is something buried inside of Lightroom Classic that will tell you pixel width by pixel height, but it doesn't tell you resolution. So you're going to have to do some math. If you switch over to Photoshop, it's a little bit better, but it's not great. First of all, if you are using the crop tool in Photoshop, it can be destructive if you don't select delete crop pixels or make sure that it's actually unchecked, not select, but unchecked. Now, if you do that, at least it's somewhat non-destructive and I'm going to come into here and I'm going to set the ratio to four by five as well. So to accommodate the client needs, I will go from portrait to landscape and let's just move this up here a little bit and I will click the check mark and there we go. Now I can inside of Photoshop tell it to do a width and height and resolution. That is true. But the problem with setting this to a width and height resolution setting is there's no way to know whether or not that image was big enough to be cropped at a new width and height resolution. There's nothing that says, hey, you have cropped this too small, here's a limiter, something like that. The only way to know after I crop whether or not this image is still good enough to say make a print is I have to go to image, I have to go to image size, and I have to make sure that I'm set into inches here and my resolution is correct. And now, now that I know that I have a 12 by 10 at 300 pixels per inch, that is a lot of work to answer a very, very simple question. Capture One handles it so much better. If I come over into Capture One, here's a friend and model, Tasha, in a very, very cold mountain lake in November, and I'm a little bit too far away. I noticed this well after I did the shoot, so I need to crop this. So I'm going to switch to the crop tool here, and then I'm going to come into, and there's two ways to do this in Capture One. There's an export panel, but there's also an export uh, little tab here, and the tab is a little bit easier to use because I could see these outputs in real time. So I'm going to select this one that I have called print. And if you look closely here, I will change the pixels per inch to 300 pixels per inch and the scale is fixed. It's at 100%. So what that means is however that I crop it, that is what I'm going to get. There's no additional resizing on export, which is pretty good. I'm going to come into the crop tool here and I'm going to set that ratio to four by five. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to resize this down. Now, if you look closely as I'm resizing this at the top, and also at the left-hand sides of the crop tool, I get a width and height. This is the width and height at 300 pixels per inch. This is a 12 by 16 right now. I don't have to guess. I don't have to open up another window. It's already done for me. And the added benefit is if I come in and then change it, say I know that I could go as low as 200 pixels per inch. Now, if I come in and I do have to, there's not an immediate live update, but if all of a sudden I make a change here to the crop tool, now it's telling me it's 31 by 24-ish uh, inches wide at 200 pixels per inch. This is fantastic. This is great when you're exporting out files. Another great thing that Capture One does that deserves its entire own video on the export features. But now I could have different presets, different crops, know exactly what my resolution and my size is going to be without having to open up another window or guess. And this is huge because it just saves you a lot of time. It also allows you to do cropping at the end of the process. It eliminates any guesswork on your part and it makes a very powerful but simple tool actually be powerful and simple. 
Someone's not counting. Up next is not actually a step, so here's a little free tip for you. And it's free in the sense that it actually is talking about money. But a big complaint that people have right now about Adobe's products is that they have to subscribe to the cloud. Now, this is not a complaint that I have. To be completely honest, I like subscriptions. I like paying a monthly fee rather than having to come up with a huge lump sum and then have to figure out where I'm going to get that money from because I want to use that particular feature. I'm okay with Adobe taking X amount of dollars out of my ATM or credit card every month. That's fine for me because I'm fine with Netflix and Disney Plus doing it. But I understand also the legitimate complaint that people have about giving Adobe a monthly fee and not being able to own the software outright. What if Adobe increases the prices? What if all of a sudden the standards change or you're limited by what Adobe's allowing you to do? What if you're on the road for more than 30 days, although now I think it's 60 days? There's if there's some very legitimate concerns. Well, if you have those concerns and you don't want to deal with Adobe's pricing structure, the good news is you can buy Capture One outright. It is not an inexpensive piece of software, unfortunately, but if you're buying a computer, you're buying a camera, and you're buying a piece of software, and your logic or your workflow is, this is what I'm going to use for the next several years, well, then in actuality, it's probably cheaper to buy the software outright, especially if you're not switching cameras or you're not in need for maybe the latest and greatest features that maybe Capture One has in an update. You can still do monthly subscriptions, so you could subscribe if you want to. So Capture One, unlike Adobe, gives you the best of both worlds. And that is your free tip for this particular episode. Four. For our fourth and final tip, we are talking about layer control inside of Capture One. And this is a huge reason why so many people choose Capture One over Lightroom. Layers, just like in Photoshop, give you control over your document that a non-layered object or editing software doesn't give you. So as you can see, I have an image here, which by the way, is a PSD file. I'd still do a significant amount of retouching, composition work, any sort of major uh, content aware fill. I still do that in Photoshop. That that is not done well by either Lightroom or Capture One. So I still do all of my retouching in Photoshop, but I can bring my Photoshop file back in here and I'll uncheck my layers. And I have a base exposure, which is actually the base image that I brought into Photoshop and I brought it back inside of Capture One. But I am going to add some contrast here. And then I did some basic color adjustment. And then I also did a color grade. Now I could do any adjustment I want to in a layer. I separated out by adjustment, but you could obviously do all of your color work and contrast work in a single layer if you wanted to, although that kind of defeats the purpose of layers here. But what I like about this is, for example, I have the contrast contrast opacity cranked way down because I just use a preset for my contrast that starts off like this. So it's a very heavy contrasted image. And if I want to keep that heavy contrast, that's great. But I don't have to come in and live with that or go into the curves panel. I could just use the opacity slider inside of Capture One to lower that where I want to. So I'm not running into uh, finding the curves panel here and having to grab and go into the curves panel and move these points around and, and, and subtly shift them, I just get to lower the opacity. If you're doing this in Adobe Lightroom Classic, it is far more complicated and tedious, especially if you're doing stuff like a tone curve where you're kind of trying to just ever so subtly move this stuff around and kind of keep things in the same area. Like I like this, but it's too heavy. Okay. How do I, where do I reduce it? You know, I like the overall look, but I just would like less of it. And the same is true with the new feature color grading. It's a great feature, but what if I just want less of it instead of having to come into here and click on these little individual things and then reduce them down or slide them around. I could simply be in capture one and go into my color grade settings and just reduce the opacity of my color grade if I wanted to. So this is just an extra level of control, but it is a huge extra level of control that Capture One gives you over Lightroom. Yes, Lightroom is improved. There's a new masking feature in there and that's great, but there is not an overall opacity control. So you still have to go and tweak with those settings where an opacity slide change from say 100 to 90% might be far easier to do uh, for all of your work and all of your post-production needs. Well, that about wraps up the four things that I think makes Capture One better than Adobe Lightroom Classic. I would love to get your feedback on this video and also what software that you're using. Are you a Capture One fan? Are you using Lightroom Classic or Lightroom? Or is there a third 
option out there that I haven't considered. Please leave all of that information in the comment section below. Please subscribe and like this video if you haven't already done so. Share this video with your friends. Get the word out about the Photo Kitchen. Also, are there topics that you would like to see covered in future episodes of Photo Kitchen? That would also be some great information to read in the comment section as well. So until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from the Photo Kitchen. 